Hello! Welcome to the fifth Knit and Kitten podcast. My name is Mallory. I am also known around the internet as Just a Dose of Love, so you can find me under Just a Dose of Love on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, Ravelry. Um, but I am most active on Instagram, and I promised I'm going to try and say um less, so I'm going to going to work on that. I'm going to work on that today. Um, I'm recording here in Edmonton, Alberta. It is Thursday, August 23rd. It's about 6.30 p.m. I had actually recorded all of this yesterday because I am trying to release podcasts on every second Thursday, but apparently my memory card didn't have enough, so it only recorded six minutes and 30-something seconds of yesterday. So this is take two and we'll just see how it goes. So, if this is your first time viewing, hello and welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming to hang out again. I think that hopefully we'll have a lot of fun together. and I think so, hopefully you think so too. So that'll be great. And I'm just gonna dive right in to what's on my needles. I readjust here, okay. What's, ah! Okay, well, lesson learned. Do not lean on the couch, because the couch will make the camera fall over. So, not gonna lean on the couch this time. Still gonna get comfortable. Not leaning on the couch. Okay, <laughs> what's on my needles? So, last podcast I showed you my Walk the Block Cal by Risen Knits. It was a mystery knit along. I can't exactly remember when it started. I think it was actually June 3rd-ish was when the first clue came out. So. Mystery knit alongs, what they do typically in everyone that I've been a part of is they release what's called clues every week and that'll be a section of the pattern. So in some cases it's four clues and some it's five. I think this one was five? It might have been four. I It's been on my needles for a while, clearly, since June, so I, I don't entirely remember. Anyways, that's how they keep it a mystery, because you have no idea what the pattern is going to look like until you finish it, or as you're knitting along. Anyways, that was a really long-winded way to say, this is my mystery knit along by Risen Knits. And here it is. I'm just going to show it to you. It required 12 mini skeins, which I happen to have from my Log House Cottage advent calendar last Christmas. I got the one that had... 12 days instead of the full 24, but actually ended up getting 14 mini skeins out of it. So I decided that would be, this, this knit along would be a really good way to use up these mini skeins. And since they're all colors of the rainbow, I just thought it was going to be a great idea. And I, I, I still think it's a great idea. Don't let me phrase that wrong. I still think it was a brilliant idea. So here's my walk the block mystery knit along scarf. I think I would call this a scarf. Scarf shawl, it's huge. Make sure I'm showing you the right side. Okay, I am. So it goes through all of the different rainbow colors here. Some nice eyelets. There's this stitch called flowers in a row. That's really cool. It's like you wrap the yarn around three times and it ends up making this cool flower pattern. I guess that's exactly what it is. It's a flower pattern. And beautiful garter fades through all of these colors, transitions so nicely. I think the purple is actually my favorite. The the teals and the purples, I would say, definitely my favorite. So it comes all the way through the rainbow, and I started my rainbow at orange because I didn't want it to be a, you know, Roy G. Biv rainbow, so it is a Boy G. Biv -er. Anyways, it starts at orange, and it goes all the way to red, and then there's this little section that you have to mattress stitch on to the end here, so that it actually mirrors the shape of the beginning. So, my goal is going to be to have this all stitched together so I can officially call it a finished object for next podcasting. So it's going to get stitched onto here, and personally, I really love the throwback to the original clue color. I think it ties my not quite rainbow but kind of a rainbow together really nicely on the two ends so this is going to be great for fall it's going to be huge i can't wait 
I really like wearing scarves and shawls, and it's been way too hot. The heat wave finally broke. It's actually been pretty cold for the last couple days. Actually, that's a lie. The last two days were like 28, 29, but last Sunday, I think it actually was only, what, like 13 degrees or something during the day? And tomorrow it's supposed to be 16 and rainy, so finally the heat's broken. It finally is starting to feel like fall. Some of the leaves are changing color uh, on, on some trees. Everyone hates that winter's coming. I like winter. It lets me wear all my knitted stuff. I don't like heat. I don't like summer. So I'm really excited about this. So I'll have this finished for next time. And I'll have this beautiful shawl, scarf, and it's going to be great. So there. That's what's going on. And... It's still hanging out in my little bee bag, which I gushed a little bit about last time because I love this bee bag. I think it's probably my favorite bag right now. And I'd say mostly it's because of this metal zipper, this stupid metal zipper. I just love it so much. So much, in fact, I'm just going to skip skip over here to showing you the new bag that I made. Since my bee bag is currently housing my walk the block scarf, I decided I need a new bag for the socks that I was working on last week. So I made a new bag and I splurged on a zipper. I know I say splurged, really it's like a dollar more than the plastic zipper and so worth it. So if you like to make bags as well and you maybe think that you could benefit from a metal zipper just because it's super awesome, I highly suggest spending the extra dollar or two on the metal zipper. I don't have any difficulty with sewing them. It's a little bit bigger, but honestly, the yeah, it was fine. So here's my new bag with my metal zipper. It's a little bit smaller. That's fine. I had planned on the inside being black, and then I realized that I had almost no black fabric left, so I agonized and agonized over what I was going to put as the fabric on the inside, and I had this beautiful orange. So. There's my bag. There's the inside of my bag. It's got like these little orange polka dot, kind of. It's not really polka dots. They're not really dots. They look like strawberry seeds if I were to put a shape to it. Anyways, I'm, I'm rambling. There's my new bag. I wanted to show it off because I really like the zipper and I'm proud of it. That's all. <laughs> okay, back on track. Stay on track. That's it. That's all I have on my needles right now. So, going right past that, off my needles. Where to start? I only have two, but I am excited about both of them. So I guess we'll just start with the socks that I showed you last time. I was in the middle of a sock that I don't have a name for yet, but I finished this sock. Maybe I finished it last time. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think I was finished that sock. Anyways, I not only finished that sock, but I finished the other sock too. Look at that. All right, real close so you can see. I am so proud of these socks. I've never done socks before where they're not identical and these are not exactly identical because there's clearly a left foot and a right foot. I don't know which side your left is. Okay. My left, my right, they're different. And I'm so proud. They have these little itty bitty cables. They're they're not even well. They are cables, but they don't cross like cables. So instead, they're little circles, and it has these leaf patterns on the inside. And I love these socks so much. I think these are the nicest socks I've ever made. So yes, I love them so much. In fact, that I went for a walk over by the river valley to take pictures of these socks, to find the perfect setting so I could take pictures. So, clearly I'm super proud. Here they are, one more time. Actually, that's, that's not true. I'm going to put them on my sock blockers so you can see the leaf texture a little bit better because it doesn't quite stretch out enough on those foot forms to see the leaf pattern. By the way, when I went for this walk in the River Valley to take these pictures of my socks, the <laughs> I had the little foot mannequins with me in my bag and my sock blockers, and I think I probably looked like a little bit of a weirdo with these little 
foot things hanging out of my bag, very clearly visible, and the sock blockers because they were they were falling out. I didn't, I didn't, my bag was not big enough. Anyways, here's the leaf pattern. Hopefully you can see that a little better. Like I said, I'm way too proud of these, and there's a close, closer stretched out version, version, vision view of the little circles. So, socks. They're done. I'm super proud. Um, oh, said it again. Oh well. Super proud. <clears throat> and I think I'll probably have a call out for testers for that pattern. Mm, give it two weeks, probably. <clears throat> two weeks sounds about right. Maybe less, but I have a I have that runner's spirit hat that needs to get a test first. So that's going to be... Anyway, this is a whole different section. I'm going to stop skipping around and I'm going to talk about my other finished object. Except I'm going to tell you what kind of yarn this is. This is... Ooh, Malabrigo. This is Malabrigo in their sock base. I hope I'm not lying to you. It is Malabrigo in their sock base. The color is Fresco Yaseco. Three words, Fresco, and then a Y, and then Seco. And I'm sure I'm not saying that right, but it's a really nice green, and I really like Malabrigo, period. And, yes. So there's my socks. And then I actually finished a whole nother project that I kind of started on a whim, I guess. I, I didn't really want to start socks again yet. And I had talked about making a surprise hat for Connor, who's standing in the doorway and watching. So, so glad he didn't hear me last time when I was talking about making him a surprise hat, because I made him a surprise hat. Connor, come over here. Come model your hat. Eh, he's gonna sit there. He's, he's gonna have to come and model this thing. Come, oh. we'll share this stool. So this is Connor's hat, and that's what the pattern's going to be called, and eventually it'll be a, a real pattern. So, <laughs> hi Connor. This is Connor. Hi. Yes. So this is Connor's hat. And it's the first slouchy hat I've ever made. Turn your head so they can see. So it can be all slouchy, so he can be like, cool guy with a slouchy hat. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or, or, check this out. Or he can go like this. And be, I don't know, I don't know what I would call that. I don't know what it stereotype you as, but anyways, the brim folds, so he doesn't have to have a slouchy hat if he doesn't want to be a cool guy hipster when he goes to school in the fall. And I sent him out the door with his hat. <laughs> so proud, like a mother hen. Right? Like, make sure you keep your ears warm. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Connor. Thank you. <laughs> so, there's Connor's hat. And it's got some twisted stitch ribbing, which I've never done before on the brim. Actually, I'll just show you this a little bit closer. So it has the twisted stitches for the rib, rib, ribbing. And then it's got these little fake cables because I wanted it to be more masculine for Connor and less cable and uh, this, is, this is a thing in my own head, but I know cables are not feminine at all. But I wanted to make sure it was super masculine for Connor. <laughs> so here it is and there's Connor's hat and I told him he couldn't keep it because I had to podcast with it now that I'm done that's that's cool you can have it back so this is in the fiber goddess McGonagall base on her love is a battlefield colorway and I thought of Connor when I bought it so that's been a plan for a long time here you go thank you you're welcome <laughs> so yes Connor's hat is done oh! Again. So a whole bunch of things happened there. Um, um, the camera fell again, and then Connor was ordering some food, so I just decided to plug the camera in because it looks like it maybe wants to die a little bit, so hopefully it doesn't do that. I'll try and keep an eye on the battery sign. Oh, I have to like look in the reflection of the window, so it, it's not going to work out very well, but okay. Yes. We're starting after Connor's slouchy hat, which is gone now. So that's good because we talked about the whole thing. Beautiful. Moving right on. 
I didn't realize how long I had been talking already and we're running out of daylight. God, this is going to be such a problem in the winter. I'm going to need like a lighting setup because otherwise we're not going to be able to see anything. So, I'm going to talk about tea because I've been talking a little bit and my throat's getting a little sore already. So, this is one of my favorite teas. It's from Davis Tea and it's their cherry blossom and it's a white tea and it's delicious. It's super light and my my absolute favorite favorite tea from uh, actually ever anywhere is called Buddha's Blend and it's from Davis Tea and it smells so good. But if you steep it for more than like 45 seconds to a minute, a minute tops it gets so bitter and it is terrible. And that's why everyone I've ever talked to hates it. It smells so good, but if you steep it for more than like, I, I even think 60 seconds is too long. 55 uh, tops, it is awful. But then you don't get as rich of a flavor as you were expecting with the way it's that smells. So what I have taken to doing is steeping the cherry blossom for a couple minutes and then Right before it's about done, adding the Buddha's blend for its 45 seconds is what I prefer because I'm a crazy person and I time this stuff with a stopwatch. So I steep my cherry blossom for a couple minutes and then I put my Buddha's blend in and it is so good. It is so good. It is my favorite tea combination and I'm all out of Buddha's blend right now. So cherry blossom is still delicious and it's in this cute little cup that I got at a garage sale and honestly I love this cup so much. It's, I was told it's bone china. I, I have no way to validate that claim, but it's all old tiny and it's got the gold on the cup. And I think it's like one of those hand painted ones. It was like $2 at a garage sale and I love it. I love it so much. And I actually have, I have two of them. This one, the handle broke and Chris had to glue it back on because he's the one who broke it. But honestly, I, you can't even really tell. So. I have paired my favorite teacup with a teapot that I got at Valley Village and it looks very similar with its little gold. So yes, now that I'm done talking about teapots and teacups and tea, because I'm a crazy person, hmm, I'll talk about knitting again. So that's everything that I finished, that's everything that's on my needles, and we're going to go through some stash enhancement and then just other stuff, I guess. So, stash enhancement. I didn't actually buy anything, but I'm still working through some of my stash that I enhanced with. Oh, I was trying to be clever, it wasn't gonna work. Some of my new yarn. Um, yes, I said um again. I'm really trying not to. Anyways, I'm still working through showing you some of the stash that I have got since the last time that we podcast uh, a year ago. Sorry, the cat's there now. Everything is so distracting today. Oi. Okay, stash enhancement. So, there's this Canadian dyer. I'm pretty sure she's located in Ontario. I... Okay, so clearly this episode has some... Issues. It just doesn't really want to happen. I'll make sure I set my timer um, because my camera died just as we gotten started on the next one. So I was talking about Essence of Autumn, some of my stash enhancement. So Essence of Autumn, that is her Instagram, I believe, and her Etsy store. And I just really like, I'm just going to show it to you. So here is one of the colorways that I ordered. So, it's gorgeous. I, I hope the tag isn't like detracting too much from the color. So it's got all these greens and blues and this like brown, speckles browns. And honestly, I just really love it. I think it'll make some really gorgeous socks someday. Maybe socks. I think probably socks. I don't know. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Anyways, I really like this chunk here where there's like the 
orange speckles right next to the light light blue and then the green is just all really pretty so this is on her sock base prairie sock that's what it's called so it's an 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and it's called Y Marsh it's fitting I actually that would this this screams Y Marsh to me so there's one I actually got two this is also on her prairie sock base and this is the hydrangea colorway and it's so pretty oh god no I'm accidentally unskeining it this is not what I want to do I have a hard time putting these things back together once they come undone okay okay grace is averted so <laughs> hydrangea it's got a lot of the same colors that I really like in the Y Marsh but with these really beautiful pinks so a little less green a little more pink a little more brown over here that part that I just finished covering up oh, I'll just show you I think it's really pretty this will probably also be socks it might be a little well actually honestly it would probably be really nice variegated with like a solid color and a shawl too but this is why you're not supposed to buy yarn when you don't have a plan for it hmm so essence of autumn yarn maybe socks it won't be able to be anything with like a super pattern on it it'll have to be a texture if it is socks because otherwise the color it's too big too many colors for uh, a pattern sock <sighs> I'm rambling again Ooh, all these things are really just like throwing me off today camera dying and <sighs> falling over and okay well anyways here number two so my mom got me a yarn subscription for Christmas a six-month yarn subscription to Muskoka Yarn Box, so also from Ontario, and they, she sends out yarns. You, you either get it pre-selected for you, or you have a choice with the, uh, mine was pre-selected, I don't really know, with the weight, I think, it's the weight of the yarn, and you can choose what kind of yarn you want and what kind of patterns you want, so like hat patterns or towels, um, they had a shawl kit, yes, I had the hat pattern one, so I got a whole bunch of worst, a whole bunch of worsted yarns, and this is one of my favorites, it might be my next hat, so this was one of the months, and it came with this little hat pattern that I don't have to show you because I didn't think that far ahead. So this is on the gloss fingering in the Scarlet Petals colorway, and it's 50% silk and 50% superwash merino. So that's, it's got a nice little shine to it, and I think it'll be a great hat. So this is Northern Bay Fibers. I feel like, yes, yes it is. Their, their tagline is come feel our balls. <laughs> so that makes me laugh every time. Here it is. Scarlet petals with the beautiful pinks and this little like I don't know burnt yellow gold I don't know what I'd call that color I think I need to take a color course so I can describe colors better like honest my colors are kind of limited to red orange yellow green blue purple chartreuse I don't know why that one sticks out but it does mauve I actually I'm not 100% with sure what mauve looks like so there's my colors I think I'll probably look into <laughs> learning how to describe colors better to you so now that that is done and I'm rambling again here is my last yarn that I'm going to show you and it's from it's a stitch up I believe she is located in the UK I think her name's Susie I'm so sorry if I'm wrong anyways this is the reaction colorway and I think it's so pretty I love how it goes from like this yellow, this very, very bright, vibrant yellow all the way to this purple. And I don't know what I'm going to make with it. It could be a really nice single skein shawl. I know Melinda over at Rye Flower Knits um, had used this colorway for a shawl design and I 
think it was called From the Ashes. Sorry if I'm wrong, but you should check that one out. It's actually a really gorgeous single skein shawl and it uses this colorway. So if you want to see what it looks like all knit up, go check that out. In the meantime, if you don't want to see what it looks like all knit up and you just kind of have a thing for skeined up yarn like I do, here's what it looks like. So, I don't know what that's going to be. I guess I should probably tell you the fiber content. It's 100% superwash merino, so I guess that would be a really good shawl. I like my socks to have nylon in them for a little bit of the durability. This is on her favorite sock base, so it's supposed to be durable enough for socks. I think it'll be a shawl. So, I wonder? I wonder. Nope. 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 Oh, that was short-lived. Okay. Other stuff. I feel like we've talked about a lot of other stuff. That's okay. We'll talk about more. So, last podcast I had kind of alluded to the festival where Tamara and I had been vendors. So... She just kind of asked, like, hey, do you want to be vendors at this event? And I'm like, yeah, that's on my bucket list for this year. I want to be a vendor at something, which that was not the kind of event I was thinking. I was thinking, like, a yarn or fiber event. <laughs> However, this was just great, and I got it off my bucket list, and we both had a grand old time, and I got to knit a whole lot while people kind of were, like, looking at our stuff. They're like, oh, super cool. So Tamara has an Etsy shop called Groot's Emporium. Right now she's making a whole bunch of lamps with... <laughs> Things that she has personally, uh, e either herself personally or um, her adventure friends have found in the wilderness, the bush, out in the wild. <laughs> so it's things like moss and driftwood and rocks and she uh, does some rock hounding and like a whole bunch of really neat stuff that she's found and I think... The last one that she put up on our Facebook page actually had, some, well not the lampshade clearly, that she didn't find that in the middle of nowhere, but she had put ferns on a lampshade in this gorgeous lamp out of driftwood. So her creativity is so high. She is such a creative person. She like puts me to shame. And it's great. So Groot's Emporium. She's on to lamps right now, but at our festival vending tent. She had a whole bunch of uh, like devil sticks. So if anyone does like flow arts, devil sticks, I, I think are technically a flow art. So there's two sticks and you, I, I can't do it. So I, I guess I probably should even try to explain. I don't know how to explain. I don't know how it works. It's all magic to me. So she made devil sticks and those were really cool to look at. Some of them had like LED lights and most of what we had there were I had a whole bunch of bracelets. I made a ton of bracelets, and hers were way prettier. And she made bracelets and a whole bunch of necklaces. So we experimented with epoxy resin jewelry. So she had a whole bunch of really cool epoxy resin necklaces and polymer clay. So she has these little itty bitty jars that she does, puts, sculpts, makes makes into a little mushroom with polymer clay. So the top of the mushroom